Let's take a really naive look at how sailing might work. I've positioned this sail so it's perpendicular to the direction of travel of this boat and it's facing me. I'm the wind in this scenario. So when I blow, the wind pushes on the sail and that pushes the boat forwards. This particular configuration of sail and boat isn't desperately useful. Like how often is it that the place you want to go happens to also be the direction that the wind is blowing? What if you wanted to travel in this direction relative to the wind? Well, all you have to do is turn the boat into the direction you want to travel while maintaining the orientation of the sail. But it's actually a flawed approach. The more you turn the boat, the less well it works. Let's look at the extreme case where you want to travel perpendicular to the wind. The wind doesn't propel the boat forward at all. It simply tries to push it over. What you do instead in this scenario is angle the sail at about 45 degrees. And there you go, we could just about get the boat to go in the direction that we want it to. Here's a simplified diagram of the sailboat. So the sail deflects the air like this. Actually, it deflects the air on the far side of the sail as well because of the coander effect, which we won't go into detail here, but the point is the air has changed direction by the time it's finished interacting with the sail. An object only changes direction when it feels a force. If this is the original direction and this is the new direction, then the force must be in this direction. Okay, so that force is coming from the sail. The sail is pushing the wind into a new direction. But every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so the sail feels a force as well in the opposite direction. And of course that pushes on the whole boat. This force is called lift, by the way, same force that's generated by an aeroplane wing, but lift here is happening in the horizontal plane. So it's a confusing word, but it's the same thing. So why doesn't the boat move in that direction? Well, it's because of the shape of the boat underwater. The part of the boat that's underwater is long and thin. And look, when I put my hand in water, it's hard to move my hand side to side. It meets lots of resistance from the water and it's easier to move my hand backwards and forwards because there's less resistance in that direction. And it's the same with boats. The resistance to sideways motion isn't absolute. And in fact, in the case of our toy boat, there's quite a bit of sideways motion because the shape of the boat underwater isn't very long and thin. But for real sailboats, it's negligible. We're going to assume it's zero. So we can take this force vector and break it into components in this direction and this direction. This direction has no effect because of the resistance of the water, but there is a component in this direction. So we expect the boat to travel in that direction. So in practical terms, there's an optimum angle for the sail. And actually that's part of the skill of being a good sailor. The same is true on land, by the way. Land yachting or sand yachting or land sailing is where you use wheels on land. The wheels present resistance to sideways motion, but reduce resistance in the backwards and forwards motion. 